Hey guys, in this lesson we're going to be differentiating more functions. That is, we're going to be finding derivatives of complicated or composite functions. Now, in this video, I think I'll start with the formula first, give that to you, and then after that we'll apply uh, the formula with some examples. So let me just kind of say this uh, as we begin this video. Um, with this lesson, it's going to take you three or four examples before you start to feel like, okay, I think I know what's going on. So just be patient with yourself, be patient with me, be patient with this video, and I promise after three or four examples, you're going to get the hang of what's going on here. So first of all, to use the chain rule, we really want to uh, make sure that we have a composite, a composite function, a complicated function. Um, that is, um, two or more functions nested within each other. Um, so let me go ahead and start with the rule itself. So first of all, consider that we do have indeed a composite function. And I'm just going to work with two different functions this time. All right, let's just say that we have a g function inside of an f function, okay, and we want to differentiate this. So I'm going to bring in the derivative operator. All right, and uh, what we do to one side, we do to the other. This is just action that needs to, to take place. So what's the derivative of y? Well, that's just going to be dy dx, or we can just call that y prime. Okay, so how do we go about finding the derivative of a composite function? Uh, and notice it's not a product. It's not f of x times g of x. It's f of g of x. Um, g is the inside function, f is the outside function, the way I have this formula written. And again, bear in mind that this chain rule is going to work with three nested functions, or four, um, etc., but we're going to restrict our look at, in this formula, just to two functions. All right, so what does that derivative look like? It's, it's not the product rule. It's not the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, etc. Um, for this particular rule, the way it goes is this. Once we establish what's the outside and the inside functions, uh, we begin by finding the derivative by saying okay, the derivative is, it's the derivative of the outside function. So to note that or show notation that represents the derivative of the outside function, f being the outside function, I'm going to use the notation f prime. But we want to leave g of x alone. We don't want to differentiate that just yet. So I'm going to write it down the way it appears. Whatever it is, it comes down, g of x. I'm not done. So it's the derivative of the outside, leave the inside function alone, times, okay, notice I'm creating a chain of factors, times the derivative of the inside function. So in this case, it's times g prime of x. That's the notation for the derivative of g. Okay. I could do this with uh, three functions as well. So let's take a look and see what that looks like in a formula. Um, let's say that I had um, f, g, and h. And it's nested. It's very complicated. We've seen some structure like that on some of our review problems. And uh, oops, let me stop here. Got busy talking. Um, let's say it's f of g of h of x. Okay, so that we have a composite function built from three, three functions. Okay, if I wanted to differentiate that, I'll bring in the derivative operator. This becomes dy dx. Alright, the outermost function is f. So the way the story goes with this, this chain of factors, is derivative of the outside function leave the two inside functions alone this time. Times the derivative of the inside function. Well, if you notice, the inside function is another composite function. So if I'm going to differentiate, I have to use the chain rule again. So the derivative of the inside function becomes, well, it's the derivative of the outermost of that inside function times g prime. Leave the h of x alone this time. Okay, times the derivative of the innermost function, or h prime of x. Okay, so as you guys can kind of see right here, 
Okay, I think I might need another Princey here. Okay, um, this is a chain of factors, and notice that F, G, and H all have present um, the derivative notation, the prime notation, to indicate that I did find a derivative of each of these functions um, at the appropriate time. Okay, so we're going to be using one of these two formulas. So let's look at some of the examples that we looked at today um, that we did um, alternate ways. So I think our first example, um, yikes, there we go, was a quote, we used the quotient rule on it. And that's all well and good, and that's fine, and we can use the quotient rule. And as a matter of fact, I probably myself personally would use the quotient rule on this, even though you also can use the, the chain rule on it. Okay, you're looking at this, and you go, okay, well, how can I use the chain rule? Well, it needs a rewrite first, and so I'm going to work across. I'm actually going to bring up the whole denominator. When we bring it up, it becomes quantity 3x plus 1 to the negative 1 exponent. Okay, so now when we study this, how can we use the chain rule? Well, it is a composite function, and if you think about what we did earlier and how we um, decided what was our inside and outside function, notice that the function is g, so I wouldn't want to use g as my inside or outside function here, maybe a different letter. Um, if you wanted to call f the inside function and h the outside function. So if I came over here and I said, you know what? I think the outermost function is 2, and let's replace this whole inside function with x, so to speak, or u, or whatever you want to. I'm just going to say the outside function is 2x, but in this case, x is being represented by 3x plus 1 to the negative 1 power. All right, well, what's my inside function? Well, I'll call it f. You can make up anything you want. It's 3x plus 1. So all I'm doing here is just writing out what I think is going to be the inside and the outside functions. So as we study each of these functions individually, we know we can find their derivatives by using the power rule. Okay, so not a problem. Let's come over here and let's just say, okay, I've rewrote this problem. I've established it's a composite function. If it's composite, a com composite, I'm going to use the chain rule. So I'm going right to g prime of x. All right, derivative of the outside function. Okay, well, I've said the outside function is 2x to the negative 1. So what's that derivative? Well, it's negative 2. Leave the inside function alone. It's not time for its derivative yet. Okay, reduce the exponent by 1 to negative 2 times the derivative of the inside function, which is 3x plus 1. We're not done. We still have more action to take. This tells us we have to find the derivative. That derivative is going to be 3. You can do a little cleanup on this. I can multiply the negative 2 and the negative 3, and I can get negative 6. Rewrite with a positive exponent. And if you looked at what we did using the quotient rule, that should be what we found. It may look a little different. I don't remember the form we had it in, but um, they are indeed equivalent. And uh, that is going to be the derivative using the chain rule. I believe the second example we looked at looks something like this. And we decided that we had to expand this and then distribute the 3 and then use the power rule on each of the individual terms. That is the sum and difference rule. So um, after today, you can use the chain rule. Once you see that this is a composite function, okay, um, I noticed that H is being used for the actual function. So that frees me to use F and G if I want to. Um, so I'm going to come over here and establish that maybe um, G uh, of t is my inside function, and that would be 15 minus t. Think of order of operations. In your innermost function, the, the thing that you would perform, the calculation you perform first. So 
So that's going to be your inside function. Okay? And then I can let f of uh, t here be the outside function. And that outside function would be this replaced with another variable. Um, just for the ease of things, I'm going to say it's 3t squared, where t represents this whole inside function. Might be best if I used u, um, but I, th I think we're all good here. Okay, so coming over here, let's uh, go ahead and differentiate. All right, so the words in your head are the derivative of the outside function. So act like this is a power function. 6 times quantity 15 minus t, leave it alone. It's not time for its derivative yet. To the first power times the derivative of 15 minus t, the inside function. So you can see it's being left alone here, and that right here you're saying I'm preparing to differentiate it. All right, let's bring this part of the problem down. The derivative of, oh, and I see my mistake. This should be with respect to t. Okay, the derivative with respect to t is going to be negative 1. Doing a little cleanup on this. I would have negative 6 in front here, quantity 15 minus t. You can distribute if you want. It's 6t minus 90, and I think that's what we got when we did the um, other approach. So, chain rule. Okay, let's look at the third example. Perhaps the most complicated, just because you're dealing with trig functions and power functions. Okay, we did this problem by um, expanding. We did sine times sine, and then we applied the product rule. You can continue to do that. that that's a great rule. Um, otherwise, if you're, you're thinking the chain rule, yes, it will work. There has to be some preparing first. Okay, anytime you see a trig function with a power on the trig function, I encourage you to rewrite, rewrite it in an equivalent form. Rewrite it as quantity sine x squared. Okay, so if I study this and I think, all right, I can use the chain rule, well, what's my inside function? Now, again, f is being used for the equation, so I might use some different variables, maybe h of x here. Well, here my inside function is the trig function. It's inside of a power function. It's the calculation you'd perform first. The outside function, if I think about just replacing this whole quantity with another variable, and we'll let that other variable be x, okay, and say that's x squared. Okay, to find this derivative, it's the derivative of the outside function, which is 2x. It's a power function. So this would be sine x left alone times, now the derivative of the inside function, what you left alone, with respect to x, of sine x. Come down here, a little more calculation to do, not quite finished. So 2 sine x, and the derivative of sine x is cosine x, so it's just times cosine x. And I know some of you guys are going to be able to, after several examples, go from this line down to this line and skip this step. And that's fine. Uh, just be careful because when these get complicated, you, you want some kind of strategy and structure to fall back on. Okay. So I believe that was the same derivative we found using the product rule. So some examples using the chain rule. <laughs> Sorry the box is so messy. All right, let's uh, take a moment and look at another example. So the next few examples I'm going to look at with you guys came from that review 2.4 that we did in class. So if you wanted to look at some of those examples, just look for the structure of what's inside and outside, that, those are the examples that I'm doing. Okay, we established that the inside function was 3x plus 5 and the outside function was um, x to the 6th. So y prime, derivative of the outside function, has us looking at the power function, leaving the inside function alone, reducing the exponent by 1, but remember it's a composite function, so we multiply by the derivative of the inside function. And so I'll come down to here, see if we can kind of do a couple things in one step here 
the derivative of this linear piece is 3. I would manage it and multiply it by 6. That's fine. So I'm going to get 18 times quantity 3x plus 5 to the fifth power. The chain rule makes uh, derivatives, makes finding derivatives um, pretty easy in these complicated cases. Otherwise, if you think about the original problem up here, I would have to take and expand this quantity six times out, multiply it out six times, and then go in and use the sum and difference rule to differentiate each term. Well, that's just not going to happen. So finding the derivative by using the chain rule is, um, is pretty convenient. So we'll do some more examples in the next video. So I'll just see you in just a few seconds.